10 Ways the Pain Arcade Made the Naruto Series Better Pain's assault on Kanahagakure was one of the most memorable arcs in Naruto. Here's how it improved the series overall. For some, the Pain Assault is the best arc in the Naruto series. It's the culmination of Naruto's character growth and presents one of the most interesting villains in the series, from both a character standpoint and his powers. Pain represents a large power level creep, acting almost as if he's the mid-boss of a two-disc game. Even if it isn't your favorite arc, the way it shaped the series from that point on can't be denied. It helped set the stage for the power levels of the Kages, Abido, and Madara once they get into action. 10. It continued Sasuke's descent into darkness. The Pain arc is rightfully more known for his assault on Kanoha, but the arc actually starts with the aftermath of Sasuke's battle with his brother Itachi. After being bombarded with information from both Itachi and the manipulating Tobi, Sasuke's descent into darkness is only more steady. By joining the Akatsuki and trying to retrieve the Eight Tails, he's cast aside any chance of returning to Kanoha. That's only the start since he gets worse in the following arc. 9. Danzo's plans started to come to fruition. Part of what made the Pain arc so good is the underlying plots that were littered throughout it. Pain attacking the village wasn't the only thing that was happening. Even if it was the focus. Sasuke was preparing to destroy the village himself, and Danzo was plotting to assume the position of Hokage if Tsunade were to die in the attack by Pain. He managed to do just that, and it was nice to see a character who often worked in the shadows slowly start creeping to the forefront as their goals were in sight. 8. It showed how to properly build a bad guy. The arc beautifully showed how to build up a bad guy by having him not only defeat several Kanoha ninja but outright kill them, showing how ruthless he was. There's no better character to do that against than the beloved Kakashi. His battle with Deva Path was short but accomplished everything it should have. It showed how intelligent Kakashi was as he was the one who discovered Shinra, Tensai's one flaw. The fact that he met his father afterward was just icing on the cake. It's a shame that the death didn't stick in the end. 7. Side characters got to do more than sit on the sideline. Sure, the arc was all set up for Naruto vs. Pain, a battle that was amazingly done in the manga. That said, it still did a good job of allowing other characters to be useful against the other paths of Pain. Kakashi got his moment against Deva Path, and the best example of all is that Kanoamaru of all characters managed to take down Naraka Path with a Raisingan. It was a great moment for the grandson of the third. 6. Kanoha was pushed into a corner. For much of the series, Kanoha was never pressured, not in the way the Sand Village was during Sasori and Daidara's attack. Even Orochimaru's assault was tame in comparison as its only target was the third Hokage. Pain's assault made Kanoha feel vulnerable for the first time, that it wasn't the all-powerful village it was made out to be. It helped perfectly set up the other villages coming into the fold and the future war as a whole. Pain destroying most of the village if a Shinra Tensai was a character-defining moment too. 5. Naruto's growth as a character reached its apex. Yes, him becoming Hokage was a big deal as well, but that was the end point of his goal, not his growth. Naruto's evolution into a beloved hero of the village and a mature character came to fruition in this arc and fight. To see him go from at times annoying kid in part 1 to the responsible sage mode teen here was amazing. He was serious from the jump, taking out the other paths of pain with ease and did it all while protecting Tsunade and the rest of the village. 4. It sealed the Hinata-Naruto relationship. From the start of the series, it was clear how much Hinata liked Naruto. She'd had a crush on him since they were little kids but never found the courage to express her feelings. 
that changed when it looked like pain was going to drag Naruto away to his death. She jumped in front of him and solidified herself as the only one for the title character. It remains one of the better scenes in the series and the best depictions of love in it. 3. Naruto overcame his doubts didn't give in. When Naruto thought he saw Hinata die in front of him, he lost control, morphing into a Six Tails version of Kurama. It forced pain into a corner. Sealing Naruto in a small moon via Chibaku Tensai. While there, Naruto began to doubt himself, to think he couldn't change the world, that people like Pain were always going to exist. That's when Kurama began to manipulate him, getting him to unleash more of his power, leading to the scene where Naruto unleashes eight of the tails. That moment of weakness helped steady Naruto's resolve going forward. 2. Fathers returned to help guide their sons. It started with Kakashi's death and the moment he got to have with his father, the white fan. It was brief yet touching and fitting considering all Kakashi had to overcome due to his father's reputation. This was magnified even more when Minato made an appearance just as Naruto was about to remove the seal from Kurama's prison. It was unexpected and provided the touching moment that Naruto needed to keep pushing forward with his goals. Both here and beyond. 1. Naruto got Nagato to trust him his way of thinking. For some, the fact the Naruto and Pain arc ended on talk may have felt anticlimactic, but it was fitting for both of their characters. Naruto had a new drive to change the world to free it from hatred. That goal coincided with Nagato, who wanted to bring peace through force. They were two sides of the same coin. Both wanting the same things. It's a theme that would reoccur once the war got underway with many villains in Naruto following a similar mindset as Nagato.